Hello, my name is Phil Jaderborg and I'm the owner of PJ Networks Computer Services and today I am presenting you with a fairly brief overview of social media marketing and the fundamental ways that you can use social media to promote your company. The ones that we're going to focus on will be blog posts and then what we call the big four which are Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn to increase your online presence and to make people aware of the services and products that you use. What is social media marketing? I think one of the best concise definitions I've read so far is what Wikipedia says which is that social media marketing refers to the process of gaining website traffic or attention through social media sites. In a nutshell, we're trying to use avenues that are available online to the average computer user out there on the internet to find your business, whether they're searching for it by name or whether they're searching for the products or services that you have. And then that information will guide them to either go to your website and read more about your company or to pick up the telephone and call you and specifically ask about your products and services. The big four avenues that you will find in social media marketing are blog posts, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. These are going to be the primary ways that you can reach out to people to get them familiar with your products and services. There's also a very important one that a lot of people overlook and the reason why it's not one of the big four is because it's not used as commonly as the four that you see on this page and that would be YouTube. Google owns YouTube and as most people know Google is the biggest search engine in the world so if you create a YouTube channel for your business and then post regularly to it whether it's once a week or every couple of weeks at the, at the least every few weeks you should be posting a new video of some kind you're going to find that your search engine rankings for your business and for your website are going to go up because Google is going to consider you to be relevant content to internet searches. Um, people tend to overlook YouTube as an avenue for advertising their business because they think I don't really have a video camera that I can record on. I don't know anything about video editing. I don't know how to post videos online. It's very, very simple. If you don't have a professional recording uh, camcorder or equipment that you can use and create what you would consider to be a professional video, then you can simply use the video camera that's built into most smartphones along with a YouTube app that you can get for your smartphone or iPhone that will allow you to actually record a video and then as soon as you're done recording it you can click on a couple of buttons on your smartphone and the phone will automatically post the video up to your YouTube channel online so you have an easy way to create a video and to immediately make it available to the public without having to do any serious professional editing of it whatsoever just get it created get it online and we'll discover we'll discuss some of the content that you can consider putting on your videos here in a few minutes but the main thing is it's going to follow the same guidelines as your other postings online which is to keep it relevant to keep it informational to keep it interesting and to keep it fun and there are so many more social media avenues that you can find online to expand your company's presence but for the sake of this beginner's tutorial, we're not going to get into detail on all of them. We're going to focus on the main four or five, I should say, if you include the ones that I've gone over so far. Get you help to get you started with an account on each of those and hopefully get you quickly moving so that you can go from a nominal presence online to a phenomenal presence online. Now, here's a very impressive and somewhat intimidating um, layout of how social media marketing works that was put together by uh, Gary Hayes and Laurel Papworth in 2008 um, about the social media campaign and some of the many different things that can be used to promote yourself online um, using social media. <clears throat> Once again, we're focusing on the basics, um, but if you look at all the different avenues that are available to you as a business owner or as a, as a marketing strategist, um, the five main 
categories or, or components of the social media marketing campaign are listed across the bottom. Um, the first one is to involve um, find topics that will involve your audience and get them interested in what you're doing. Um, then create your content. Um, try to do it in fun and interesting ways that will keep people's attention. Then discuss what you have posted online. Always be very diligent about responding to people's questions and comments and even criticisms um, so that they can feel like they have an active dialogue with you. Um, promote your business promote your specials, promote your special events, um, promote your services. Obviously your main goal here is to let people know what you do and what you sell and to bring them to you. And also to, at the end you want to be able to measure your results and see how you're doing. Uh, if you look at these, um, the whole social media marketing strategy is about generating inbound calls so you're not the one picking up the phone and cold calling people or trying to do massive emails to everybody in the world. Um, the whole idea is to draw people into your web and bring them to you for your products and services. Step number one, set up a blog site couple of different ways to do this. Um, one of them would be to go to GoDaddy.com, click on uh, blogging accounts. Um, the, the one that I am using for my company, PJ Networks, is called a blogcast. Um, these start as low as you can see from $5.99 per month for the economy package, which is all that a, a basic blog site really needs is the economy package. Um, and in fact, you can't see it on the screen, but the economy package was actually on sale. If you bought 12 months or more worth of service, it was only $3.99 per month. So the nice thing about GoDaddy is they're reputable. Um, they've got fantastic tech support. They will stay on the phone with you for an hour or for 10 hours if you need them to while you're creating your blog site, helping you through all of the little details and intricacies to get it looking just the way you want it. And they give you lots of templates to choose from. So that's an easy way to just immediately jumpstart your blogging. Um, another place you can go if you want to go for free uh, blog software and blog hosting services. If you go to wordpress.org you will find that you can download for free their uh, blogging software that will uh, can be implemented on most popular web hosts. For example GoDaddy um, will let you install WordPress. If you go for the GoDaddy blogcast you can actually install WordPress as your um, framework for your blog site or you can create one using their other tools. Um, with WordPress.org, you can get their software for free to put on your own web server, or they refer you to getting a free blog on WordPress.com, which is another website that they own, that on their most basic fundamental blogging package, you can get a hosting for free. Just be aware that if you go with that route, it's not going to integrate the name of your blog site into the name of your website. So for example, in our case, our domain name, our, our registered domain name is pj-networks.com. So our blog site is part of that. It's blog.pj-networks.com. If you go with a free WordPress hosted site, it's going to be something to the effect of wordpress.com forward slash and then your company name. So wordpress.com forward slash PJ Networks, which is fine if all I'm looking for is a blog presence, but the visits to that website would not count towards traffic to my main company website. And of course, one of my goals with social media is to increase my website traffic. So I have chosen to have a paid for blog hosted account. This is a quick screenshot of our blog site, which is hosted by GoDaddy. Um, it's very colorful compared to a lot of blog sites because our company colors are orange and blue and I wanted to keep it bright and upbeat and colorful. Um, the main contents here in the middle you see there are the places where the actual blogs go and if you scroll down this page you would see that there are other different blogs that we've posted over time. Um, there's a place on the left side for people to subscribe to our blog so that if they put in their email address they'll get an email confirming that they want to receive uh, an email every time we post a new blog. Um, there's a place for people to search through our blogs to see stuff that we've done in the past. Let's say somebody wants to read about all the different postings we've done on viruses and such. They could just type in the word virus and every single article we have that has that as a category or a tag will show up. And then there's a list of recent, recent posts that we've done. Please beware and be aware of the fact that WordPress.com 
has limited tech support for free accounts, of course, because they're not charging for it. And technically, they own your content when you're posting it on your blog page because they're giving you free hosting. So if you want to read the legalese here, basically they're saying that they can use the content that you're posting on your blog post uh, pretty much in any way they, they deem fit. They can take your pictures, they can take your posts, they can use them on their own posts if they want to promote you, to promote themselves. Um, if you delete content on your blog page, um, they're not guaranteeing that the content that you've deleted is going to immediately disappear from their content. So it could be wandering around on their website for years after you've gotten rid of something that maybe you accidentally posted or that you didn't intend to post. Um, and then they're also saying that they may terminate access to any or part of your own blog page at any time with or without cause, with or without notice, effective immediately, meaning that one day you might connect in and find out that they've changed their mind, that you've broken some rule of theirs. Basically, you play by their rules. They also have the right to place advertisements on your web page uh, on, their, on their blog site. So just be aware there are a couple of downsides to using a free WordPress hosted blog site. Okay, step one was set up a blog post or a blog site. Step two, set up a Facebook business page. The basic elements of a business page are a company image, um, a brief description of what you do. There's access to other information about how to contact you. They'll give a physical address that you can, you can post your business hours. Um, it's also kind of a collection point for your photos, for your videos, a map to your store or your physical location. Um, it's easy to set up a Facebook business account. All you have to do is go in, open up your your personal Facebook page, which is where you have to start from, and just go in the search bar at the very top, type in business account or business Facebook. You will find articles and links that will walk you through an easy process of setting up your own Facebook business page. Step three, set up a Twitter account for your business. Um, once again, basic content and an image, um, a little bit of information about your company, uh, some different links to, to other people's uh, articles and posts that they've made on Twitter, and also a list of your own tweets that you've made. Uh, a lot of times I simply will make a reference to something that we've posted on our blog page and then I tweet about it so that people reading and following our tweets can easily find the blog post that we just made. You want to set up a LinkedIn business account. Basically, it's a personal LinkedIn account that I've created for my company. Um, and as the owner of PJ Networks Computer Services, of course, my company is mentioned multiple times throughout my different uh, LinkedIn account information. Um, it's a place for people to see a picture of me, to get a description of what my company does, my background, and also shows what other people have endorsed me personally for. So, for example, lots of people have endorsed me for my server experience, for Microsoft Exchange, for networking. It just gives people a level of confidence knowing that they're dealing with somebody who has been endorsed in different categories that they are supposedly experts in. Um, and I'm very pleased to be able to share those with everybody. And finally, set up a YouTube channel. Once again, please don't skip this uh, just because you think it might be a lot of extra work or require a lot of technical skill. It does not. Um, once again, setting up all of these different accounts for your company, you can just go into Google and search for, you know, setting up a YouTube channel and it'll take you to links that'll point you step by step on how to do it on your own. Um, our YouTube channel is called PJ Networks One. Um, and it's got a nice photo of a computer motherboard just so people know that we're technical. Um, there's a company logo. There's a video manager where I can click on a button and upload a video from my computer. And it also allows me to share thoughts, make different posts. Mostly though, to, I'm trying every week or two weeks to post a video like the presentation that I'm doing right now up to YouTube so that people can find us say hey I like the content that these guys are posting on subscribe to our channel and then every time we release a new video they'll get alerted and they can go watch it now what about the rest of these that we talked about earlier you know what as a business owner I only have about at the most an hour per week to manage my posts my, and uh, my blog posts my Facebook updates and posts, my Twitter posts, um, get a video online if at all possible. That's one of my weekly goals. I don't really have time to do the rest. 
there are ways to manage them all using, let's say, there's pieces of software that you can purchase, um, such as Hootsuite, that allow you to track your results and also to simultaneously post to all these different locations on the internet. Um, personally, I am focusing on the, the the core five that we've been talking about, and so I'm going to continue on that line of conversation. But keep in mind, there are other ways to get out there, and the more places that your website and your company name appear, the more exposure you're going to get. Remember to use your blog as your anchor for your online social media presence. Try to post once or twice each week. I think any more than that is probably getting a little bit overkill. So, you know, at least one or two good blog posts a week would be great. Keep the content relevant to your business. So try in some way, shape, or form to keep it to what you do or what you sell. Uh, try to make it interesting and informative. Try to keep it upbeat and fun whenever possible, and that won't always be possible, but at least keep it interesting and try to keep a positive slant on it whenever possible. Um, include links to other online resources, like another article that you read about. You might summarize, you know, maybe in our case, Windows 8.1 is coming out soon, and there's going to be some improvements in Windows 8 that have been rolled into this free Microsoft update to version 8.1. And, of course, when I post content like that on my blog site, I usually include a link back to an authoritative uh, news article like CNN or NBC News or something like that so that people can get more of the technical detail. Um, try not to make a big sales pitch otherwise people are going to basically unsubscribe to your blog page if all they're getting is weekly advertisements for your company so you know try to keep it from becoming a big sales pitch but do mention your products and services and find a way to tie interesting content back into what you do for, as a business. Um, Post other people's comments and respond to them. So when other people might make a comment on your blog post, even if it's one that contradicts what you're saying or is taking objection to something that you've said or the way you've said it, it is always appropriate to make sure that some of these negative comments get posted so that you can address them online and show people that you're not just posting stuff that looks good to you. You're also trying to address other concerns that people may have. That encourages them to go to your blog site and to post their own comments. And try to include images and photos. Images and photos and videos make online content interesting and it's an attention getter. So the more content you can post with an included picture or with some sort of an image, you will find more people are drawn to your blogs. Um, now, as far as the others that we're going over, Facebook, I would recommend three to five times per week. Um, Try to always try to put a link to every blog post that you create so that you're getting some extra exposure to your blog site. Um, also post special offers, contents, uh, contests, excuse me, uh, that you might want to have, you know, with a photo online of something and ask people to identify what it is. Uh, if there's exciting news or links to articles that you can include on your Facebook page that you think your audience might find interesting, please include those. Um, special events that you're having, like an anniversary sale or something along those lines. Um, coupons that people can print out on their printer and walk into your store uh, to get special deals on products and services. Uh, you can have trivia questions that you post. Hey, the first person to answer this question gets a free oil change or a free manicure or something like that. Um, plenty of photos always photos, 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 and images to keep people visually interested and then try to keep it fun and upbeat. So let's stop and talk for a minute about Facebook etiquette. Um, one of the best things you can do to make sure that your Facebook page is well received and gets a lot of visitors and people liking you is to log into Facebook as your business and then search for other businesses in your local community and like them. Click on the like button which will then elevate their presence, but the search engines will also recognize the fact that you are being interactive with other Facebook pages and you will get better rankings, you will get better consideration when people are searching Facebook for different kinds of businesses. Um, do go to other websites, uh, sorry, go to other Facebook pages and like and comment on their posts. So if they post a picture of something that you find attractive or interesting, make a nice comment there. Um, to say nice things about other businesses online. Uh, never use Facebook to criticize because just it's bad karma to start saying negative things about other businesses because it's almost always going to come back at you. Um, respond to your readers comments so if they make a posting on your Facebook page saying I really liked that photo that you 
posted here or I really liked coming to your special event, then thank them and just be be courteous. Um, don't brag constantly about your company, but do promote yourself. That's obviously the main reason to have a Facebook business page. Keep your content relevant, just like in, po in blog posts. Try not to ramble on and on and on and on about something, but, you know, do at least show enough time and consideration to the people that are going to be reading your content that you're not wasting their time reading a lot of unnecessary things. Um, and then never leave your Facebook page unattended. If you look through Facebook at your local businesses, search for something like accounting firms or uh, doctor's offices or law offices, you'd be surprised at how many of them you will find that have a Facebook presence but they don't post regularly and some of them maybe made two or three posts when they first set up their Facebook page and they never went back again to do anything with it. That is just doesn't look good for your business. It implies that you either don't care or that you've gone out of business. Whatever you do, if you can have a Facebook page, don't leave it unattended. Post content regularly. On Twitter, you want to be posting somewhere three to five tweets per week. Uh, once again, you can get uh, a Twitter um, app for your smartphone so that it makes it easier to do. Um, put a link to every blog post that you create just like with Facebook so that you can get more exposure for your blog. Um, every time you use the toilet you want to tweet about it? Not. Don't. Please don't be one of those people who tweets every time you make a sandwich or go to the bathroom or the supermarket. Uh, let's face it, you have too much time on your hands if you're doing that and most people don't care. Um, but do use it to post special announcement, announcements, sales, special occasions so that people can retweet them and keep you know the message rolling forward. Um, for LinkedIn, I recommend you check it at least once a week. Uh, kindly, graciously accept the endorsements that other people are sending to you, but don't accept endorsements that are not relevant. Sometimes people may accidentally give you an endorsement that was recommended by LinkedIn saying, well, is this person good at X, Y, and Z? And they'll think they're doing you a favor by saying, yes, I'll endorse this person for that skill. If you don't have the skill or the knowledge, don't accept the endorsement. Just click X to close it and accept the ones that are valid. Um, do take the time and consideration to endorse others on LinkedIn for their skills. Uh, make sure you update your info so that if your company's been in business for five years and you have your seventh anniversary, you should be reflecting that, you know, that your company has now been in business for seven years. Um, so update your info and invite others to link to you so that you can keep a nice large web of community going on within uh, LinkedIn. So, for your YouTube postings, um, as I mentioned before, all you really need is a decent smartphone or an iPhone uh, and a YouTube app that you can use to instantly post a video online once you've created it. Um, try to keep sh the videos short and fun. Um, those are the ones that seem to go viral, especially if you put a kitten on them somewhere. Um, Educational videos like the one that you're watching right now, uh, good content. It doesn't necessarily have to be super short, um, but obviously you want to keep it relevant and moving along. Uh, promotional videos for events or products, things like that that you want to get the word out quickly and give somebody, give people something to look at. So they, you know, a video is a great way to 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 sh uh, showcase a new product that you're offering. Face-to-face um, -face videos, smile for the camera. Turn that smartphone around, point it at your face, give a nice little message that you feel comfortable posting online, and then you can upload that to YouTube. Screenshot videos. This presentation I'm doing right now is basically a PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to convert into a video, but you can also make videos of nothing but just screenshots from your computer if you're trying to show somebody how to do something. Slideshow videos, once again, same idea, just a bunch of pictures that you can string together into a slideshow. Create a video out of it, add audio if you want. Like your own videos. You need at least one like if you want your video to stand out from the other millions and millions and millions that are out there. Um, I heard a presenter at a seminar one time say that if you just like your own video once you post it, you've just made sure that your video will rank higher than 90% of the rest of the videos on YouTube because people are posting stuff all the time and forgetting to like it themselves. So it doesn't, it's not necessarily a bad practice to like your own video. 
Now, how do you tie all this together? Um, there's Google Analytics, which is free website analytics from Google that will tell you about, you know, the ra rankings of your website and how many people are visiting it and what days of the week they're visiting it. Similarly, there are social media analytics that tools that can basically help you to track your results and your popularity and your exposure using different social media avenues. Um, some of the more popular ones that I believe they're all paid for are Hootsuite, simply measured in clout. In most cases, you can find something good for the 10 to $20 a month um, price range. I would think $10, you could probably find something that'll suit your needs that will help you manage all of your different social media presences online. Um, and that will help you assist you in getting a post out to all of the different avenues at the same time instead of you having to manually log into each one and do it yourself. Um, just search Google for social media analytics and you'll find lots of tools and resources, some of them free, some of them cost a few dollars, but if you're going to take the energy to get into social media marketing, you should have some way of measuring your success at it. Bonus round, local search engines. If you visit, there's a website called getlisted.org and it will show you all the different places that links to your company show up. Um, as you can see from this example here, there's yellowpages.com, City Search, Yelp, Hot Frog, Foursquare, eLocal, Google Plus, Super Pages, Info Group, Bing, Yahoo Business, uh, and there's a, something called Localese. Search for your company on the web and claim your listings. Almost every single website you find that represents themselves as being a local business search engine is going to have the ability for you to click on a button, claim your company's listing, and they'll send you an email to confirm that you are who you say you are. At that point, you can go in and type a full description of your business, your operating hours, things that you do, things that you sell. Um, you want as much as possible for all of these different website postings on the local business databases to be the same so that you show consistency. If one of them says you've been in business for 10 years, they should all say you've been in business for 10 years. So make sure that the phone numbers are correct, the addresses are correct, read them over once and once a year go back and revisit them to make sure that the content is valid. So that's an easy one. Getlisted.org is a good place to start, but just open up a Google search engine and search for the name of your business and include the name of the town that it's in and follow all the links that you can find and make sure that everything is being represented fairly. You'll also find that this is where you see what type of ratings people are giving you. For example, on Google+, Plus, people can give your business anywhere from a one to a five star rating if they've done business with you before. And it's not only important to see who's saying good things about you, but if somebody had a miserable experience with your company, you would probably want to know. And in many of these websites will give, the, give you the ability to respond to negative comments and get the record straight. So if there was a reason why somebody got upset with you, then you can at least explain your side of the story. In some cases, you can get those negative postings removed. So that's about it for our introductory video. Um, feel free to contact us for more information. You can email info at pj-networks.com and either I or one of my staff will respond to your questions. Um, you can call us if you need professional business computer support or home computer repairs. You can see the phone numbers on the screen right here. Um, we are opening a new location in Charlottesville, Virginia at the intersection of 29 and Rio Road where Charlottesville Music Store used to be. Um, but we always welcome input from you folks. Hope you'll visit our website pj-networks.com. Hope you'll visit our blog page and maybe sign up for it at blog.pj-networks.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it on YouTube and I'll see what I can do about coming up with another video that maybe goes into more detail on some of the categories that we kind of skimmed over quickly during this introductory video. Thank you very much and have a good day.